Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the Inland Northwest. For some people, weekends are a time to head to the beach, to the movies, or to the nearest big city. But these folks prefer something that's a little more slow-paced, a little more on the rugged side. For them, weekends mean packing the wagon, hitching the horses, and hitting the trail. This route cuts across the Flathead Indian Reservation in western Montana. And every Memorial Day weekend, this wagon train is back on the dusty trail. This is the, the start of the official Memorial Day wagon trip, right here. This is what we call the Sloan Bridge Camp. Get in and all. Okay. There, you know, we got the rope that goes on the sides. We got baler twine. Yeah. Baling twine? Yeah, that's authentic. All my friends call me cowboy. I'm a biker buckaroo. Uh -huh. Harley Davidsons and har horses are my life. I see. Got to have both to get a good mixture in life. That way you got plenty of spice. And I think he's only wanted in two or three states. Two or three states now. I've got it down to two or three states. The history of the wagon itself was my grandfather's wagon. He bought this wagon from the Missoula Mercantile Company in 1907. It's been in our family ever since. My grandfather used it to go to town and buy groceries or whatever he needed to do. And uh, uh, then my father had it, and he, he quit using it in about time I was born, about 1930, and we've always had it stored in a building. In 1989, I built this box and I kind of touched up the wheels a little bit, and we used it on the 1989 Montana Centennial Cattle Drive. There was 4,000 people, 4,000 cattle, and 300 wagons on that little trip. Whoa. Yeah. And then I put it, I drop it down to here. Oh, okay. oh. The uh, wagon train started probably about 25 years ago. A uh, little local group started having what they called the Westmont Wagoneers. And they just came out and had a camp out for a few days and then they'd go out and Anyone was able to go. There was no charge involved at all in the beginning. And as time went on, then there were things like, uh, we're using the reservation, so we were required to have Indian permits. Uh, we're required to be insured for our trips, so we have an underwriter who insures the group. So we, we do have some fees, they're not very high. I'm the trail boss for the trip this year, which means I just check to see who's coming and how everyone gets along on the trail and if there's any troubleshooting you can get through and see that people just get through okay. And make sure they're here when we get here and then I'll check again to see if we get some new people in.
many owners have given personal touches to the wagons. For instance, Bob and Marge Sanders have lined their wagon with a quilt, just like the hospital wagons of the old days. My husband bought the running gear and built the box and restart it. Occasionally it's on a parade, but most of the time it was primarily built for this ride. We average about 65 miles a year. Well, I have ridden uh, oh, 1,500 miles in that wagon. We enjoy wagons and ant mules and riding and all of the thing, camping out. Uh, these are things we like to do. We have, we've built about three covered wagons and we pick, select one and, and go on a trip. We started doing covered wagons the year Montana had their centennial in 1989, built a covered wagon and then we've just been using it ever since. Whether they're enjoying a new hobby or keeping their family history alive, these wagoneers are taking old West traditions into the future, at least on Memorial Day. If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.